Hello and welcome to your Yale Week. I'm Allison Park and here are this week's top stories. This semester, students who shopped large science classes seeking to fulfill their distributional requirements got an unpleasant surprise. Restrictive caps limiting course enrollment even in lectures. Some classes had over 200 shoppers at their peak. Yale College Council President Saloni Rao, class of 20, said that such caps on science credits often impose stress on students who need to fulfill distributional or pre-professional requirements. She noted that the problem has been exacerbated since Yale increased its number of matriculating students in the past two years. The reasons for capping enrollment varied. Some professors cited a lack of teaching fellows and spatial barriers. Although Dean of Yale College, Marvin Chun, announced the introduction of new shopping period guidelines last semester, including a request that instructors post a list of students admitted into their classes within 48 hours of the first meeting, many students have felt dissatisfied and frustrated with the semester's shopping period. Chun told the news in December that these guidelines were solely advisory. This week saw some major development in New Haven's 2019 mayoral race in what could be one of the most competitive mayoral races since 2013. On Wednesday, Justin Elliker, an alder turned nonprofit director, filed the necessary paperwork to run as a Democrat in this year's primary race for mayor. After Elliker filed his run, Harp told the New Haven Independent that she expects to run for a fourth two-year term, setting up what is likely to be a competitive race alongside Elliker, one of her biggest challengers from 2013. Elliker, a former New Haven Alder and current executive director of the New Haven Land Trust, graduated from Yale School of Forestry and Environmental Studies and the School of Management in 2010. In a press release, he highlighted several reasons for running, noting that he wants to tackle issues such as increasing economic opportunity, improving living conditions, and advocating fiscal responsibility. Last Thursday, longtime city resident, former Yale New Haven Hospital nurse, a New Haven activist, Wendy Hamilton, also filed paperwork to run for mayor, seeking to focus on discontent with the status quo at City Hall in her bid to replace Mayor Tony Hart. Hamilton, who told the news that she's running for mayor to upseat the current inefficient administration, is running on a platform that echoes the sentiment of much of the New Haven community on issues such as the budget, the public school system, and affordable housing. Yale no longer has a second largest endowment among institutions of higher education. The University of Texas and Texas A&M Investment Management Company announced last month that the joint endowment it manages for two schools, University of Texas and Texas A&M University, surged to $30.9 million, surpassing Yale's $29.4 million endowment during the 2018 fiscal year. In the past 20 years, the state system's endowment has edged out Yale's twice in 2002 and 2014. Texas's high returns were largely buoyed by the mineral rights from land it controls in the Permian Basin, a stretch of land that has recently become the world's fastest growing oil producing region. As universities around the country continue to profit from their fossil fuel holdings, student activists at Yale have renewed their efforts to push the university to divest from the industry. Just last month, 48 students received citations for staging a sit-in in the lobby for Yale's investment office, demanding that the university completely divest from fossil fuels. On an endowment per student basis, Yale remains second, trailing only Princeton. That's all for now. From all of us here at YTV, have a great weekend.